So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about New World. All right, guys. New World is... It, it was what it, it has been and still is one of my absolute um I would say favorite games um I've had some of the best times of my entire gaming life playing this game um and it's not completely because of the game it's because of you know you know the community of people that I met and and found and played with was amazing <clears throat> And, and I really, really, really enjoyed my time with it. New World, for a various set of reasons, it was my first MMO that I really got into, that I played from launch, and I got to experience all the hype of it um, from the moment it launched. Uh, for uh, many, many reasons, it will always have a special place in my heart. But the trajectory of the game looks like this. Now, obviously, I think we should just ignore kind of like this. It had one of the most insane peaks of any MMO that ever came out, but it is what it is. You know, you're never, you're not going to be able to ride the wave of your peak forever, right? And of course they could have kept a lot more people than they did initially, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You're not going to be perfect. They brought people back when they added um, some fresh start servers at the start, uh, at the end of 2022, start of 2023, towards then. Um, in October 2022, they usually do big patches in October, um, when everyone's inside because the weather, the weather's starting to get cold and whatnot. Um, they did big patches in the fall. Uh, they had a pretty decent amount of people that got up to 137,000 players, uh, returned. And honestly, over time, the drop off did kind of last, you know, it, the, the, the rate at which it went down was definitely slower than the rate at which this went down. This was a, uh, you know, the pe game peaked when it launched September 27th, 2021, and it was down pretty much 99% of the way by February. All right. So that's like, what, four months? Now, this peak in October of 137,000, it kept players semi interested until I would say it reached its most rock bottom point. In around February now, of course, October to February is you know less time than uh, um, November to February. So you know maybe you kept players around for about one more month than usual. Then they brought players back again in September, uh, towards the end of September, start of October, for uh, the rise of the Angry Earth. Now, as you can see, every time that they do something new, their peak is smaller than the previous one. That's because some people. You can't build a bridge back that you burn. Um, 77,642 is the amount of players that we had in the end of September, the, at the end of 2023. And I would say that, honestly, it did take a while for it to reach, like, its really, really low point around, like, January. Um, so, hey, you know, take you take what you can get, you know, about four months before I would say the, uh, you know, we started getting into really, really scary numbers territory um and ever since then it has been a steady decline ever since then and the reason why is because after dropping the expansion they have released almost no new content there have been it has been months and months and months and there's barely any new content um it is extremely extremely unfortunate if we go to the new world uh if we go to the New World uh, official page, right, and we look at the updates, let's let's look at news. Let's go through everything from the rise of the angry Earth on. Okay, what are we going to find? We're going to find not much. Right, I can promise you. I already know this. You're not going to find much. Right. All right, so here's around the Rise of the Angry Earth. Rise of the Angry Earth announcement. Uh, Lion's Horse of Dire you, you can ride mounts now. There's a new dungeon. There's a whole new area, and I believe, in my opinion, this is the most well-done zone. Well-done zone. Sorry. Well-done zone in the entire game easily. Easily it is the best well-done zone in the entire game, in my opinion. Um, it is 
there, there's a lot of new there's a lot of mob diversity there the the storyline was not bad at all i actually liked it um i really liked it um i would say you know mounts are something that players have wanted for a long time they added mounts overall this was a really good update um to be honest now what i was telling you guys before what i was showing you guys back here was this right here in 2022 at the end of 2022 we got um we kind of got a free expansion in a way they released a brand new zone in brimstone sands uh they released a new weapon in the great sword uh they released um and they did release the flail in the savage divide and weapons are very very important in new world if you don't know this because um basically there's no classes you get there's weapons there's like there's weapon trees that you get through uh doing mastery on weapons and you can get passives and abilities through the weapon tree so you don't get abilities because you picked paladin so now you get a paladin ability you get an ability because it is a flail attack um it is a specific it is an attack specific to the flail it is a flail ability um so specific to your weapon is what i mean kind of but yeah um the other expansion that they did they basically released an expansion at the end of 2022 and because the game was in such dire straits they said all right we're not even going to make you pay for it this is kind of our way of making it up to you guys they added heart runes which is like a, a big ultimate ability that isn't tied to a weapon but instead of tied to a um a trinket kind of uh that your character has um they added they added a lot they had a lot of good things. They had an entirely new zone added onto the map, and it was very, very good. I would say that's that was also incredible, and definitely better than anything in the base game at the moment. Over the past two years since the game is released, they have fully reworked the entire leveling experience. Now, I've played through it. It is very, very good. Uh, they added Soul Trials, which is like, if after you know, you're doing a few quests, you know, you meet a few bad dudes over your time questing, and you can fight them. Um, you fight them in kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one instanced uh, battles. Uh, not one-on-one -on -one exactly. Some of them spawn like uh, other mobs. But you know what I mean. Um, you go into their area, into their lair, wherever they are, their home. And you basically fight them in an instance. Uh, a single player instance. Um, now that's going to come up again during this video. Um, because they're doing something really good with that, which is one of the few good things that they're doing recently. Anyway, yeah. Rise of the Angry Earth, they reworked an entire zone from a completely dead, useless zone that has no place in the entire that has no place in the game, if we're being honest. And they basically made it an entirely new beautiful zone, definitely, in my opinion, the best zone in the entire game. Like I said, story was good. They added the flail. They added artifacts, which are like chase weapons. They are legendary, um, not legendary. They're one step up from legendary. They're like mythic items. Um, you can have one mythic weapon of your two weapons. So one of your two weapons can be a uh, artifact. You can have one artifact piece of gear. So um, helmet, chest, gloves, pants, boots. Uh, one of those can be an artifact. And then you can have an artifact piece of jewelry. So you have earrings, uh, necklace, and ring. Um, and then one of those can be an artifact. They each have very uh, special passives that only that specific artifact has. And then you do quests to unlock all the other perks on the artifact. And then your final perk can be unlocked through uh, crafting. So, definitely not bad systems. Everything was fine, okay? Everything is fine. If we keep updating the game well, we will be fine, right? We had a little Halloween update that was good. And added a new um, in December, about like two months later, or less than two months later. Added it, well, talked about the Eternal Frost going to come out, which is a new dungeon coming out. They added that. Um, the Glacial Tarn Expedition came out in... November 16th, wait, what? Oh, yeah, 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 November, November. Um, so as we started getting into the winter months, they added another expansion pretty much right off the back of adding um, this. We were going pretty strong. 
I heard barely any complaining happen during these times. Um, everything was very, very good. And then as you can see, from pretty much this patch right here, right, this patch right here, on, you are going to see a lot of dead space. All right? A lot of dead space. Um... Oh wait, never mind, never mind. Eternal Frost, the Glacial Tarn, um, it didn't get added till December 13th. But yeah, so they add the expansion in October. All right, two months later, less than two months later, they add the Glacial Tarn, they add uh, a new dungeon and everything like that. Everything is great. Uh, a bit of time goes by. Um, you, know, you have the holiday events going on. They announce what's coming uh, soon for, you know, the game in terms of events, rewards, gamepad support. Basically, they released a little mini roadmap at the end, right? This is supposed to be for February to May. Plus, that gamepad support, they did. Uh, main story quest fully updated. They have completed it. New artifacts. Yep. Cross-world expeditions. They added those. Improved group finder. They did that. Seasonal events. That's good. Pretty much everything on this has been completed. Right, we have a little mini event that doesn't really matter. Like you can fight these bosses in the open world. That's cool. Whatever. Um, you know, uh, crossword expeditions. A lot of what they added within the past year since um, the expansion has been a lot of groundwork to make the game better at baseline, which is good. Which is good. Well, we can all admit that content is king in an MMO. Content is absolutely king. And they barely released any of it. All right. We're just going to keep going through this. Crossword Expeditions Improved Group Finder. Those are good. That's good. Crossword Expeditions is great. Awesome. Loot biasing. That's good. That helps people get their builds faster. And you can go, you can switch to uh, different builds and then find those better. Um, that's good. You'll, you'll, you're more likely to find things that you want. Uh, these are things that have been in other MMOs for a long time. Um, they up, they fully reworked the combat and animation system. That's very good. Um, it obviously had a lot of kinks when the game came out. It still has some, but as you can see, uh, uh, well, I don't know if as you can see, I don't know if you're still playing the game. They have been able to fix things significantly at a faster rate than before all right with the way that they you know reworked the code right main main story quest was fully fully redeveloped entirely redeveloped we were good everything was great season five delayed season six where um a lot of things got pushed back a lot of things all right very, very unfortunate. Not a lot's happening here. As you can see, I've been doing a lot of scrolls. We got like, I guess we got a spring event. Sure. Um, I, I guess we're just talking about content that's already been added to the game. Uh, uh, where's my content? Uh, okay. Yeah, we, oh boy. Rabbit's revenge. Oh boy. Yay. Easter event. I kill bunnies. Yeah, oh, modern day. As y'all could see, I had a lot of stuff to say, and then at some point, I just started scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and there was pretty much no new content. That is because they did a dev update where they said, we have a lot of amazing things coming. We'll let you know in six months, about a half a year. I'll let you know in six months when... Uh, the game will be, you know, we'll have a panel at Summer Games Fest 2024. Summer Games Fest 2024 just wrapped up, and people are very, very disappointed. Very disappointed. What they basically did was on Summer Games Fest and uh, IGN Games Fest or whatever it's called, um... They had a trailer for the game, a new trailer. It was a really good trailer. I'm going to show it in this video. 
followed by just an announcement for the game coming out on consoles, right? Uh, that's what they had at Summer Games Fest. At IGN Games Fest, they did have a little panel where the where the devs talked, and they basically talked to you like you've never heard of New World in your entire life. That and they also changed the name from New World to New World Eternum because they want to um, separate themselves from the people who, uh, from like New World Order, like that kind of stuff. Um, what are those called? Theories. Uh, they're trying to separate the name from... That's all good. That's all well and good. Right? The game's coming to console. That is a good thing. We should want this as a player base. Because the game coming to consoles means that it's going to be available to more players. Why would you not want your game to be uh, available to as many people as humanly possible? This is going to increase, straight up, this is going to increase the amount of people who are playing the game, period. This is a good thing. This will reduce the rate that servers are dead. In fact, one of the actual good things that they did was in a like patch that was just a random patch, just a random numbered patch, um, they added server shards. And what that is is basically server layering. So a lot more people, uh, they're basically setting the groundwork for a lot more people to be able to be on a server. And it's not going to lag you out because your whatever area you're in has a billion people in it, right? Not that a billion people would ever play this game. Um, so that's pretty good for all 10 people to play this game. Or all nine other people, you know, excluding me. Um, and then they release a dev update. And it's like, okay, that's fine. You, you want to release a trailer and say, hey, the game's coming out um, on consoles. That is all well and good. You know what? That's fine. Whatever. They released a dev update on their YouTube channel at the moment that it dropped, at the moment that that news dropped at Summer Games Fest. If you watch it, they will continue to talk to you as if you have never, ever heard of the entire of the game in your entire life. They're basic. They they don't even say update. Right. It's the words that they're using. They're not using the words update. They're not using the words change. They're using you can do this. You can do this like to things that have happened very recently or to things that are coming. Right. And basically with that kind of language and, and, and the marketing behind it, they changed it from uh, they changed the name or the genre from a MMO to a, a, a ARPG. And that's well and fine because technically the game isn't, that's not going to change anything about the game. They have just added enough solo elements to the game that they feel as though they can call it something different uh, for their rebrand. It's basically like PC players, what we are getting is a patch update. But what they are treating this as whenever they release it to console is basically a relaunch. And that is fine. You change the name. You launch it on console, you do a relaunch of a shitty game, and as long as you have enough to actually consider it a relaunch, that's fine, right? But to PC players, the information that we have so far is very, very, very small. It is very, very small. All right, we got a new bear mount too, we can, it's whatever. I'm going to watch a video on that. We're going to react to this video now. All right, I'm done with the yapping. Uh, let's watch the trailer. I'm not going to watch the dev update. It's awful. Um, we need one for... I, I pray to God that what they have announced is not everything that they have planned. I hope they, they have much, much, much more for PC players and all, that they, for whatever reason, are dumb enough to just not talk about yet. Um, but yeah. And then they release a new dev update. They said... By the way, they have released that they are doing a Fortune Eternum that is going to come out, which is basically like a, a mini dev update. Um, oh, well, it is kind of a dev update. Uh, they're going to release a Fortune Eternum video this week on what is to come and what PC players can expect because they have already addressed the fact that PC players are very angry. In fact, the game is being kind of review bombed on Steam right now. So it is what it is. But let's watch this trailer. It is a good trailer. Endless tides of time. They've come to 
these mythical shores, seeking mastery over death itself. A cruel and beautiful paradise. Good. It's a trailer. The primal forces clash over the island's deepest secrets. Oh yeah, what's this quality? Where ancient mysteries awaken. Look at how beautiful Brimstone Sands is, man. Where heroes. As you can see, there's the bear mount. We're adding a bear mount. But the mounts, they don't do anything different between the animals. It is just basically a skin. But that's fine. That's fine. I, I like riding different mounts. And I love bears, they're my favorite animal. And demons are born. That was a insanely good trailer. Probably one of their best. Right? But Island of Legend, it's Eden, it's Shangri-La, it's a land persistent uh, a place where you live years are going to that kind of thing. When you look at this <laughs> stuff, they're, they're just cool. explaining the lore. And then we switch to the art director and he's like yeah, I drew pretty trees because I like because people like pretty trees, and then they start talking about like other stuff, like uh, they start talking about like combat, and it's like yeah, um, it's action combat, um, and like when you when you like you can like do light attacks and heavy attacks and dodges, and it's like as someone who's been playing this game for like three years now, it's like oh oh my god, you can are you oh, oh my god really. Oh my god, it's action combat! Oh, that's crazy! Oh my god, and in the lore, you like, you like, fight these people? Oh my, and you go through the story? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so cool! Bro. We know. We know. Bro, like, it would it would have been so fine if they did this. And then, like, the next day, and basically say at the end of the dev update or the beginning of the dev update, hey, we're going to be talking to new players now. If you want to know what current players can expect, which is a lot, by the way, tune in tomorrow to our dev live stream at time, you know, at whatever this time. You know, like, that would have been fine. That would have been good. But, like, we didn't do that. It's just, we just dropped this. We talk to the community like a bunch of, like they're a bunch of babies who forgot everything, uh, su suddenly got amnesia, and it's like, bro, what are we saying? Like, and then just nothing for the current player base. It is really, really, really annoying. There is content for PC players that we know of, right? There is content coming, but like, uh, it's not a lot. Right, and they didn't do a very good job communicating it at all. Rightfully so. Because Ahoy, New World's big announcement today was met with massive disappointment, and rightfully so, yep. because almost all of it was focused like that. mostly negative on the console launch, leaving PC players to wonder what is in this for them. I think the marketing was handled terribly, and I will discuss that in more detail tomorrow. But Awful. today, I'd like to give you an overview 
of the things that are actually confirmed for PC players because there <laughs> are many things that have been confirmed. It's just that they are confirmed in six different sources. So you kind of have to piece them together yourself for no reason. First of so all, some quick important clarifications are needed. New World has been rebranded into New World Eternum and is labeled as an action RPG now, but it's still going to be the same kind of game, so pretty much still an MMO. It is literally exactly the same game, but they changed the, the said genre. It cannot be played offline or anything, it's just a branding strategy for marketing. Yep. Also, despite the incredibly misleading wording on this in one of the articles, PC players that only own the base game and not Rise of the Angry Earth will still have access to New World, they just won't have access to the new things that are coming with New World Eternum. For PC players that have the Rise of the Angry Earth expansion, the New World Eternum version will be free. The release date is going to be on October 15th, 2024. Better be. The first thing that has been confirmed <laughs> is the raid. True. This will have three bosses, it's a linear raid, and each boss will be harder than the last. So, three boss raid. That's really good. Three boss, ten person raid. See, this is good. Can we get more of this? And can we communicate this correctly? Like, this is something that people have wanted for a long time. But it is so buried under the pile of shit that the communication, the, the talking, the, the, just everything has been. And, and also, the fact that, like, people have wanted this for a long time, but people have wanted this and other things for a long time. Right. And it, it, it's like you can't go dark for six months. Say, hey, here is a handful of things. Here is, here's like five things. Here's like three things that are actually content. And also, yeah, this is coming out in October. I know we told you to wait six months until June. But that is so that we could wait three or four more months till October. Oh my god, we're so intelligent. This will be done with 10 players and we have a few screenshots from the trailers and so on that seem like they may be from this raid. We know that the raid is called Her Sign Raid and we know that it's going to be themed similar to many of the enemies in the Elysian Wilds. I mean. It will be important because this is at least one of the places where you get the highest gear score items in game with a cap of 725. So as predicted, we are getting a gear score cap increase. What's also been confirmed good. is the lawless. So we get gear score cap and we get a raid zone, which That's is good. a free for all open world PvP, PvP zone. zone. So it's not going to be purely PvP. And your goal here is to gather rewards and resources from chests monsters and rival players the whole system is going to have some sort of extraction mechanic where you want to grab some stuff in the zone and then escape the zone again with whatever you've gathered new world escape from tarvakov new resource here called mystic doubloons and this will allow you to buy some of the i quote best gear in the game we can assume that this gear will be more pvp focused it has not been stated if i would sure hope so immediately be at the new gear score cap Interestingly enough, if we look at the picture of the Lawless Zone, we can kind of see the area that it's going to be in or what way it's designed. <laughs> and if you look at the picture that is being used for Cutlass Keys, this actually has the same structures. So we can assume that this is just going to be integrated into Cutlass Keys. I'm really happy that the Elysian Wilds uh, was added where First Light is. And then they also add, you know, this thing at the bottom of the map in Cutlass Keys. There should be more reasons to go to like the sides and the corners of the map. A lot of people do convene towards the middle uh, where Windsward and Everfall is. It used to be 10 times bigger of an issue. It's really not that much of an issue right now. The, the sides of the map actually do have content. What's the nowadays. bottom left of the map? In the Cutlass Keys screenshot, we can also see a person blowing a horn. And we have another screenshot that looks kind of similar. It might actually be the same area again. Uh, we can see a different structure in the background here. We can see a ship here, but the buildings kind of look like they might be in the same place. So this could also be True. some other places. In the <clears throat> but we also again have a person blowing a horn here. So this could possibly be 
a mechanic in the free for all zone. If you appreciate the info so far, consider subscribing, clicking the bell and maybe leaving a like. The next thing that has been explicitly confirmed is matchmaking in arena. I <laughs> heard some people claim that it's also confirmed. How many are there? for OPR, but sorry about that. Subscribing, clicking the bell, and maybe leaving a like. The next thing that has been True, explicitly confirmed is matchmaking in arena. I so this is really good. Claim that it's also confirmed for OPR, but I would I'm assume this is like a source for that. You get like a rank in arena, and then you'll be matched against players of your equal skill they level. They trial it in arena first before they play it in other places. Something that is a big focus for the devs is that they made soul trials mm -hmm. repeatable now. So this is really good. This is what I said that we were going to be talking about this again in this video. Um, the soul trials, which are like boss fights that you encounter throughout the main quest line. Uh, Baggins actually did a video where he talked about how these were really good and they were very well designed fights. And you, you kind of just you do them once as you're leveling through the game. And sometimes you didn't even do them once because some people, they, they play the game or they've played the game for a while now, right? They didn't want to remake a character to re-experience the new, uh, maybe they don't care, right, about the new leveling experience, the new storylines. So people have never, got, there are some people out there who have never, ever gotten to experience a single soul trial. And now they'll be repeatable at endgame for um, endgame loot. That's obviously, that's very good for endgame gear and whatnot. We'll also be coming back in this context, so various solo trials will be available. Exactly. Let's say you can That's get huge. some, I quote, great loot in the solo content. It sounds like it's similar to what you can get in group content, but it is worth keeping in mind that New World's definition of great loot can sometimes be somewhat questionable. It is explicitly stated that there will be end game uh, versions funny. of the solo trials, no mention of difficulty <clears throat> levels though. For some strange reason, the promotional screenshot- of I would imagine that they should have, they should add little like mutations for it. That'd be really cool. But whatever. On the website for Soul Trials is Neshatun, who is not a solo boss, which may mean that he could become a solo trial as well. But at the same time, in that screenshot, you can see three players. So I feel like that's just an oversight. Swimming is once again confirmed as coming into Eternum or floating around in water as well. There was no mention of this having any that's fine by me. value or trade. Uh, obviously, obviously, that's good. But I've never been someone who needed swimming in New World. It, like the, the fact of the matter is. Um, there, there's nowhere that it does make tra tra movement around the map a little better whenever you encounter water, of course, or it makes it a lot better, I guess. But, um, it, it, it's never been vital. There is no island so far off the coast that you can't get to because you can't swim. And then it's just been sitting there. Ne uh, there's never been a player who's been able to get there because they don't add swimming yet. Guys, it's been in the game since the start of the game. How are we going to get there? We can't swim. No, there's nothing like that. All right. It, it, this, you can swim now. There was nothing you could, couldn't get to before because you couldn't swim. But now you can swim. They did say that whenever they would add swimming, they would add a purpose, a reason, somewhere to go. Diving mechanics. I think he's about to say this. Um, so... Maybe the Forbes and Eternum that is basically the devs talking to current player base, maybe they'll have something in store for us as a big reason that they're adding swimming. Or Other than just to have swimming. Thing like that, just that we can swim to some extent. So my impression so far is that's going to be relatively basic. New artifacts coming have now also been confirmed, but without any details of what they will be. New artifacts is fine, artifacts it's whatever, obviously. That were found, but never obviously, if you add a system like artifacts and chase items, items you should continue to add given. new ones in the future. We also have confirmation that there will be fresh start worlds, and based on all the wording that we've heard so far, it does seem like everyone can just play on the fresh start worlds. That I would much prefer that. I would much prefer they just, they just add a world, or they add worlds, and then whoever can join on them. Because when it's only new characters, right, you're alienating a lot of the player base, most of the player base, in fact. And when those fresh start servers start to die out, it is Jover. I don't know. Maybe they will announce a time limit where PC players can't go on those worlds early on or something. But That was one of the biggest mistakes with the current system of fresh start servers is 
They added fresh start servers, and then the fresh start servers were popping for a long time, and then they died. Then they eventually died because new, or like old players, can't join the new fresh start servers, right? Without completely restarting the entire game. And some people just don't want to do that. Like I said, some people don't not, do not want to do that. So they can't join the new servers, and no, like you know, the hype from the expansion is gone. So nobody's just booting up their computer on a random Wednesday morning and deciding, hey, I need to download New World for no reason right now, um, and then join the on this fresh start server uh, like three months after it's been added. You know. All right, what happened to my what happened to my game? Hello guys, I'll finish out this video. So far, everything points towards everyone just going wherever they want to. In that context, it's also worth pointing out that cross-play between all platforms is possible. There are more clips and screenshots. Cross-play, of, of course, is very, very good. Showing us a little bit more detail compared to the previous ones. I really it's like this. I really this hope that this is actually being added. Um, I, I, I would very, very, very much prefer this. Well, but I think it's very likely that <clears> I think that'd be very nice. There will be an or at least an option to be able to move things around your AI as you please. Uh, uh, yeah, your UI as you please. That would be amazing. On the graphics that will apply for both console but also PC. New players or new characters. Archetype system doesn't really matter. I'm gonna kind of skip this uh, because basically this is just you, you. You're not forced into a class, but if you're a brand new player starting the game, you can be like, I want to be paladin. Then you get like. Greatsword life staff given to you at level one, and then it's like it just gives you a little bit of um, ability to get start working on weapon mastery for your preferred weapons pretty much on spawn. There's some new technology that is aiming to effectively remove login queues pretty much entirely, as far as I understand. I would assume this is like the sharding. In a situation where your server is full and you just can't get in, apparently, it immediately gives you the option to play on another server. I'm not sure if this means you can temporarily go to another server until your server has space again, or if this. So this would be really good. Also, if they greatly increase the uh, amount of people that can be on each server due to server queues or due to shards being added, or uh, server layering being added. A permanent switch that was not specified. By the way, you won't be able to play your current existing characters on other platforms, <coughs> so you can't play a PC character on an Xbox. Yeah, I don't know why it's cross progression. That is really, really awful. Mobs unfortunately, you will have more hit reaction to your attacks, effectively bringing stagger back to some degree. But th that is That's only good. a thing in PVE, not in PvP. This right here is just something that I think you should be aware of if you're a PC player that hasn't logged in in a while. The Azos Stalker Wolf Mount will be accessible for players that own the game plus Rise of the Angry Earth. Nice. You, see, uh, you only need to log pretty, in before pretty, the pretty dope, well, skin. expansion, but New World Eternum is coming out. So log in between now and then in order to be able to get this mount. As far as I understand it, most if not all of this content is meant to come in Season 7. There has been no information about Season 6 so far, other than that there will be some form of beta test on the consoles to see how things work there, but that doesn't really have anything to do with PC, so we'll have to wait and see if anything is coming in Season 6. And if you now look at all the things that I talked about here that have been announced, uh, you will notice that this is almost one-to-one -one the list of things that I predicted would be in the announcement because a lot of it was already teased or data mined. Things that were not mentioned were a potential new weapon, that was just my speculation, the barbershop, which had been data mined, but it's maybe not a priority, or it's maybe not something that is coming out. This That's true. If they're gonna, if they're going to only release weapons like very, very, very um, few and far between, then they should definitely try to, um, at least add one new weapon a year, like with the big expansion. Uh, so maybe, maybe there are. I feel like there are things that are missing that just. It seemed to always happen around this time of year, and if they don't this year, <clears throat> it's just going to be extremely, extremely disappointing. Like, there's always something happens to a... There's either a new zone or a zone gets reworked. That has been the theme every year for their big, massive fall rework uh, uh, patch expansion, basically. <clears throat> there's always a new big system, like there was artifacts in... Uh, there were heart runes. Uh, in Brimstone, Stan Brimstone Sands, 
And there were, uh, what's it called? Artifacts in Rise of the Angry Earth. Um, there is usually a new weapon. And it's just all this stuff is just not there right now in whatever they've announced. This soon. And, April and honestly, they could announce so many things and it'd be like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is great. This is what we've been waiting for. But it, it, it and honestly, like, it could be like the best update of all time. But people are still going to be a little bitter about like, yeah, remember June when you kind of like punched us in the balls? Yeah, that was crazy. Potential zone rework. That was just my assumption as something that could possibly With like also be coming. The most awful announcements I've ever heard in my life. Overall, an like the most awful communication I've ever heard in my life. Like overhype it beforehand. It's awful. And not even talk <clears throat> about this stuff when they do their big announcement. It could have gone very differently in terms of reception. Exactly. Certainly not the massive revival move for the PC player base that some people were expecting for some reason, but I don't really know why people were on that level of copium in the first place. It was communicated so incredibly poorly that AGS immediately had to pull a damage control post today just to explain that there is actually some content coming. So that's what I'll be ranting about tomorrow. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. If you'd like to get early trading tips and support my channel further, then you can do so on Patreon. Thanks to all of my patrons who are do. Yep. So uh, thank you for Duke Sloth um, for making this video. It was very, very good, very, very well explained and wrapped up nice and neatly. Um, unfortunately, my my new cam died. Uh, my new cam died. I'm trying to work out the kinks with this thing. I'm obviously uh, I'm using a much 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 high quality, much more high quality camera right now. Um, I actually started using my DSLR, my uh, Rebel T6i from Canon, uh, which I got during college about four years ago, and I'm trying to use it as a um, cam for my videos instead of my shitty webcam. Um, because I just want the quality to go up, but in trying to make the quality go up, I basically just, I, I guess, removed myself from being able to have a camera in the last 10 minutes because it just turned off. It might have died, and if that's the case, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to uh, deal with that in the future uh, with only having a very, very limited amount of time to stream or make videos due to my camera dying, so... Yeah, I've only been live for about an hour and 17 minutes, and it's, it's dead, so unfortunate. I'll see you in the next video, guys.